Hi everybody, today is December 13th. Welcome to the next video in the daily blog series during the month of December where we break down the nativity story and the story of Jesus Christ from the beginning of the month up through Christmas. Today, we are looking at John the Baptist. When we last left off, Jesus had reached the age of culpability. He was in the temple. He was a teenager. Uh, John the Baptist had also grown during this time. And now we zoom in and some years have passed and the work of these two important men, John and the Lord Jesus Christ, had begun. Listen to what it says about John the Baptist from Luke and Matthew and Mark, all three Gospels. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. And he went into all the region about the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of through Isaiah the prophet, who said, the voice of one crying in the desert, make ready the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked ways shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth and all mankind shall see the salvation of God and all the country of Judea went out to him and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins and John was clothed in camel's hair with a leathern girdle about his loins, and he ate locusts and wild honey. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who has shown you how to flee from what is to come? Bring forth therefore fruit befitting of repentance. And do not think to say within yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to out of these stones raise up children of Abraham. For even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that is not bringing forth good fruit is to be cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, saying, What then are we to do? And he answered and said to them, Let him who has two tunics share with him who has none. And the publicans also came to him to be baptized, and they said to him, Master, what are we to do? He said to them, Exact no more than what has been appointed to you. And soldiers also asked him, saying, And we, what are we to do? And he said to them, Plunder no one, accuse no one falsely, and be content with your pay. Boy, do we have a lot to break down here. This is awesome. We, all, we know the story. They the crazy guy, locust, wild honey. All it's saying here is that he lived his work. This dude was in the desert, in the river, baptizing. It says all the people in the countryside of Judea and Jerusalem came out to see him. And they give us examples of different people groups that are coming to him, trusting him, listening to him. He's having an influence. We get the connection to prophecy. In Isaiah, it says this is the guy who's going to come before the promised one. Now let's break down some details. And all the country of Judea went out to him and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All means all. Popular guy. Lots of people coming out to the baptism of John. Everybody's interested. Because remember, all these supernatural events have been occurring for a short period of time. Visitations from angels. Strange occurrences. Fleeing to Egypt. Returning from Egypt. Jesus ends up settling with his parents up in Nazareth. But now... The way is being made ready. And to make the way ready, he's making a lot of noise. When he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he calls them a brood of vipers, which is a specific dig from the Old Testament law. He knew they would totally get what he was saying to them when he called them a brood of vipers. But then what does he say? Who showed you how to flee from the wrath to come? It's like he's saying, hey, uh, this is a divine thing happening here. How did you guys know anything about it? Like, you know, you're supposed to be the holy men of Israel, but who told you? You're so stuck in this, that, and the other. I'm surprised to see you here. And he tells them, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Because, what does he say next? And this is a good indicator to reveal to us that John is not now talking just about Israel. He's talking about a God who is saving the whole world, the creator God of the universe, Gentile and Jew alike. He's saying, don't come at me with this stuff saying, well, we're children of Abraham because God could pick this stone up off the ground and make it a child of Abraham. 
We're talking about something much bigger here. And then he says, for even now, the ax is laid root to the trees. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is chopped down. It makes me think of the writings of Jerome. Later character, 380s, he gives us the Latin Vulgate, the first Latin Bible. Tons of writings, important guy, contemporary of Augustine and Ambrose. And he would talk like this in his writings. He would use this type of vivid imagery to talk about chopping down the philosophers that were daring to argue with his perspectives. Uh, pretty cool. And crowds ask him questions. What do we do? How do we prepare for this? And he says, first of all, share. Charity. If you have two tunics, give one away to a person who doesn't have any. Publicans came to him and he said to them, what are we to do? Don't take more than what has been appointed to you. Just take your share. Wow. And then soldiers. Notice he doesn't say, don't do your job, soldiers. He says this. He says, don't plunder. We know what that means. When wartime comes, there are good soldiers and evil soldiers. He tells them to be good soldiers. And he tells them, don't accuse fal falsely people, right? And he also says, be content with your pay. Well, one who is content with their pay and their duty and their rank and their station are going to be much less likely to plunder when they're in the position of power. All right, friends, that is our vlog, blog, gospel story for today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow on the next one. Please support our work. We're hitting the streets and we're helping those who are cold, hungry, in need, widows, orphans, imprisoned, immigrants. We need your help to do it. You can make a check out to Evangelist Nick Garrett, Inc., or you can use the links to PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. Scan the QR code, type in the little code, give a dollar or two. It is tax deductible. It's an organization. So if you want a letter for taxes, we can give you that. Uh, send it to the P.O. box. Uh, get in touch with us. If there's anything you want us to know, we're here for you. Uh, God bless you. May your work today bear fruit.